come in. Hello. Hey. Hi. Uh, James, correct? Yes, James. Perfect. That is very nice to meet you. My name is Sarah. I will be your intake nurse today. Okay. So what is going on? The ER nurse told me that you were in a car accident, correct? Yes, in a car accident this, this morning. Um, they said my vital signs were abnormal. Okay. And they suggested I come and get checked out fully. Okay. So I did have a look at your vital signs that the ER nurse took and your blood pressure was slightly elevated. So we do definitely want to redo those. Okay. Um, James, is that your preferred name? Is yeah. that okay? James is fine. So I am just going to take a couple of Preliminary notes here. Can I have you confirm your age for me? Sure. I'm 32 years old. 32, and you were in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And were you driving? No, I was a passenger. You were the passenger. Okay. Okay. Let's see your diet. I do have you as NPO right now, meaning nothing by mouth um, except for medications. Okay. And we'll kind of adjust that as we go on. Okay. Um, can I just have you verify your code status? I have you down as a full code. Is that something that you'd still like to keep just yes. in case of an emergency? We can keep that the same. Perfect. Did you have anything to eat or drink today? Uh, I had cereal this morning uh, and a half of a coffee. Okay. And it's only been about two, uh, two to three hours since the accident, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you wear any oxygen at home? No, I don't. And just kind of at baseline, do you walk around independently at home? Do you typically require help? Um, there's no help, and I do walk around independently. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is actually set this down, and then these are your therapy cats, right? I was told yes, you have two. Perfect. And they'll be staying with you yes, throughout your stay. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure I will leave a note that you have pets in the room, and we will keep the door closed so that they don't try to run away. Thank you. So if it's all right with you at this time, I'd like you to head to the bathroom. Okay. It's right through that door. Okay. I want you to leave me a urine sample if possible. Okay. So I will give you this. You have to fill it up to the line here that says 50. Okay. There's a little window in the bathroom. You can just open it and set it in there. Okay. Um, I'd also like to have you change. It's just hospital policy. We have to have you wear our non-slip socks just to keep you from falling. So definitely do not get up without those. And then if you don't mind changing into a hospital gown, I can help you tie it if need be when you come out. Okay. So I will hand you that. And then I have just a belongings bag here for you to put your clothes in so that we don't lose track of anything and you can just bring this back out with you, okay? Right. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to do that while okay. you're changing. I'm gonna gather some supplies for your stay and get the bed ready for you for overnight, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, well, there you go. All right, James, it looks like you're good to go. Yes. Perfect. Are you comfortable? I know the gowns yes. are a little... I think I'm as comfortable as I'm going to be. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, if for whatever reason you want to change your gown, just let me know and we can okay. try to get you another one. So I brought you some supplies. This is just going to kind of tide you over until I really get my assessments done. I'm not sure how long you're going to stay, okay. but you are definitely staying tonight at least. Okay. So I figured I would gather some stuff for you. Um, probably not going to need these. I didn't put an incontinence pad on your bed. I don't guess that you'll need it. They tend to just make people hot. So I do have a little trash bag here that I will put on your bedside table. Um, I brought you an eye mask in case you have trouble sleeping. We also have earplugs if you need them. Of course, toothbrush, toothpaste, some hand sanitizer, lotion, body wash, shampoo, um, this is just a deodorizing spray. You can use it in the bathroom or in your room. And then because you have glasses, I did bring you some cleanser for those. If there's anything else you think you'll need, you can let me know. After I do your scalp exam, I'll leave you with a comb in case you need it. And we also have deodorant and that kind of thing if you need it, okay? All right. So I will set this on what will be your bedside table when I'm done with the examination. Okay. And it is on casters, so you're welcome to move it around as you see fit. And the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and get this out of the way. So this is your mobility assessment. This will go on your door. Mm -hmm. Essentially when physical therapy or um, the nursing assistant or whoever comes in the room, if you need help with anything, it's just a way for them to know how you move around and what you may need help with, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and get this filled out. So this will be your first assessment. And 
sitting edge of bed, I saw that you were able to move independently, so I will give you a one. You are able to walk and move appropriately. Standing at the bedside, walking side to side, you are fine. And for your independent with mobility, I will also give you a one. So your total score is a four. Essentially, that just means you're able to do everything thus far independently in your room. You don't need to call for help when getting out of bed. If you feel like you need it at any point or you feel dizzy mm -hmm. or anything changes, please do hit your call button and sure. someone will assist you, okay? Sure. So I will put this up on your door. That way, if you do get up, people aren't wondering why you're walking around Thank by yourself. You. Thank you so much. Of course. Mm -hmm. so I will hang that up on my way out. All right, so why don't we go ahead and get started with your vital signs. Let me just gather some supplies here. So if I could have you lift your tongue for me, mm -hmm. go ahead and close, and that should stay. While I do that, I'm gonna take your blood pressure. Okay, relax your arm. Hand open, feet uncrossed, normal breaths. I'm gonna put this on your other hand. This will measure your oxygen saturation. Perfect. If you could just tilt your head down for me. 98.6. So you are not febrile. Look like your blood pressure might be up a little because my cuff is pumping up quite high, which typically means your blood pressure is elevated. So we'll give that a second. Okay. 143 over 117. So that diastolic number is quite a bit higher than what I would like to see. Temperature was 98.6. Your respirations are at about 19. Oxygen saturation is 98%, which is great. Heart rate is 82, which is fine. And like I said, your blood pressure, definitely that diastolic number needs to come down. Okay. So it is improved slightly from what it was downstairs in the emergency department, which is a good sign. Good. So for now, it is a little bit more on the aggressive side, but I would like to check your vital signs every four hours for the time being. Unfortunately, that means we will be waking you up. Okay. Um, but I think it's important to just keep an eye on it, at least for the night. We'll be checking it every four hours, okay? All right. All right, James, if it's all right with you, the next thing I would like to do is get your IV placed. So I'm going to be placing a peripheral IV. You are right-handed, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you have a preference which hand I put it in? Is it okay if I use the this right hand? Fine. Okay. So I will have a look and see what good placement for that would be. So let me just have you extend your arm. I don't typically like to put it in the wrist just cause that can be pretty uncomfortable. Ideally, we'd have it in kind of your inner elbow area. And the only thing about that is if you bend your elbow, mm -hmm. it's going to occlude. So then we'll have to remind you to keep your arm straight. Okay. Um, but typically this is where we do like to place it. Let me have you turn your hand over for me. Okay, so I'll give you a choice. We can either place it in your hand or place it in your elbow. It's really up to you. It looks like you have good veins either way. 
Why either way. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and try and get it in your AC. Okay. So let me just gather a few supplies. Do you tend to bleed a lot with IV placement, or you think you're no, going to be okay? I don't. I think I'll be okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will go ahead and get this placed. I'm also going to draw a set of labs. You did have labs done in the ER, but we will do them every six hours until tomorrow morning. Just okay. as a preliminary, just to make sure that nothing is going on with your heart. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is have you turn your arm out and just relax it kind of on your lap there. Okay. This is a chloroprep swab, so essentially just very concentrated form of alcohol, and I'm going to use this to clean the area. It's going to be very, very cold. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the accident itself. What exactly happened? Uh, someone ran a red light. Um, the driver kind of turned to the left at the last second, so it wasn't full impact on my side, but my side did take most of the impact. Okay. And um, the driver that was in the car with you, they're okay? Yes, they're okay. Just cuts and bruises. Yeah. Okay, so while that dries, I will everything else ready. I'm going to put a 22 gauge in. It's a pretty standard size. It shouldn't be too uncomfortable for you. And while I do this, I'm also gonna take a set of labs, like I said. So I have quite a few tubes here. Um, we will also be checking your blood sugar a couple times throughout the night, just cause you're not eating or drinking anything right now. And with the lab is being taken, I don't want you to get dizzy or anything, okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the card part. It's all right if you'd like to look, but I am gonna go ahead and palpate the area. I'll and I'll look, look away, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't blame me there. So it's gonna be a quick stick, a little bit of pressure. I will get the labs done, and then we will kind of proceed from there. Ready? Yes. One, two, three. Okay. Hold still for me. I'm just gonna flush to make sure we're working. Okay. So let me 
go ahead and get this dressed and then we will get your labs taken. Okay. Go ahead and get your labs drawn now. So quite a few panels that I'm doing here. One is just your regular set of labs to make sure everything's okay. A couple things they missed, I didn't see that the ER nurse was able to get, so I'll go ahead and get those now. And then the other ones are just your second heart panel, like I said, because your, your blood pressure is elevated, we do wanna check that to make sure nothing else is going on. You're not having any symptoms of a heart attack or anything like that, but it's just good to make sure. Car accidents can definitely put stress on your heart. Okay, so we are all done with that. I will get those sent over to the lab. Let me go ahead and flush this one more time. and tape this out of the way. Actually. I tape this up while it's not in use so that it's not hanging down and then if it's all right with you just as kind of prophylactic I would like to put a sleeve on you this is a posy sleeve it'll just help keep it up and out of the way okay sure. so four fingers will go here and there is a hole for your thumb hold on your gown or anything okay cool. is that too tight no, that's fine okay perfect let me just clean this off Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get your swab out of the way. I do have to do a nasal swab on you. This is going to rule out rhinovirus, the flu, strep, and then of course COVID. So I have two swabs here. First one is gonna go on the right side. Okay. Going on this side. Very good. I apologize. I know that's pretty uncomfortable. So this will get sent to the lab along with your blood work. James, so now that we have your IV placed, we can go ahead and move on. And we have 22 and the right AC, and it is flushing well. Labs are completed, swabs are completed. All right, are you ready to move on? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, perfect. So I do have a couple questions to ask you about your symptoms that you might be experiencing now. Are you in any pain? No, I'm not. No, so you would say one, one out of 10 at this time? Yes. Okay. Any discomfort? My back's a little, a little tight. Um, my neck, when I turn, just okay. a little bit. So some initial discomfort. Yeah. Um, are you experiencing any burning anywhere on your body? No. Any tingling? No. Numbness? No. Do you have a headache? Slight headache, A little yes. bit. Can you rate that for me on a scale of 1 to 10? 3. Okay. Any blurry vision? No. Double vision? No. Okay. No loss of vision, correct? No, no loss of vision. Are you experiencing any tinnitus or ringing in the ears? No, I don't think so. No hearing loss? No. Loss of smell? No. Any odd smells? You're not smelling smoke or anything like that? No. Okay. Loss of taste? No. Or any odd taste, weird taste in your mouth? No, not at all. Okay. Did you at any point black out or lose consciousness during the accident? No, I don't think so. Perfect. So I have a bit of a neurological assessment to do. Um, this assessment will be done every day. Okay. Um, essentially, we're just testing the brain function right now. We okay. want to make sure that you're not declining and you should be improving realistically as we move towards your discharge. Okay? okay. So I have a set of questions that I will be asking you. Just answer them to the best of your ability. Okay. Sure. Can you tell me what day of the week it is? Yes, it is Tuesday. And about what time of day it is. You don't have to give me a specific hour, but... Um, it's afternoon. Very good. Can you tell me what my name is? Sarah. Very good. And who am I to you? My nurse. Do you know what room number we're in? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, so this is room one. Okay. And can you tell me why you're here? Because I was in a car accident earlier. Very good. Okay, so all of that is just testing your short-term memory, which appears to be intact. Okay. So can you tell me what your date of birth is? Yes, 2 15 Very good. And what is your mother's maiden name? Uh, Marissa. Can you tell me a name of two schools that you attended at any point in your life? Uh, sure, Roman and Episcopal. And what was your favorite subject in the first school that you listed? is fine math. Can you tell me what your favorite food is if you have one? Um, let's see, pizza. Okay. What size shoe do you wear? Size 15. Can you tell me who the current president is? Yes, it is Joe Biden. And do you know who the former president was? Uh, 
Trump was former president. Very good. So all of that was testing your long-term memory, which is intact. Um, so let's move on to a couple questions about situational awareness. Can you give me one second? So let's move on to a couple questions about situational awareness. These will either pertain to you or not. Just answer them as best as you can. Sure. So can you tell me if you are here because you're feeling well or because something might be wrong? Something might be wrong. Good, and I have a couple cards here that I want you to have a look at. So if I have you look at this scenario here, mm -hmm. can you tell me if this person looks safe or in danger? They're in danger. Good. Can you tell me what about this picture looks abnormal to you? Uh, the sink is overflowing with water, and I saw the young man is on the stool falling over. Very good. Okay. Can you tell me what a solution would be to this scenario here? Uh, yes, yeah, she should turn off the water and she should tend to her children. Very good. So that is testing your situational awareness. We want to make sure that you are thinking properly, clearly, that you're able to solve a solution with a logical okay. answer. Okay. So let's move on. Can I have you read this sentence out loud? Sure. You know how. In here. Down to earth. In here. I got home from work. In here. Near the table in the dining room. In here. They heard him speak on the radio last night. Very good. Any issues reading that? Did you feel like that was fairly easy for you? Yes, it was very easy for me. Okay. Can you tell me the number of living beings that are in this picture? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Tell me the number of objects here. Yes, six. Very good. And what were those objects? They were butterflies. Very good. And does this page appear to be in color or black and white? Black and white. Good. So I have a couple things that I want you to repeat out loud. Okay. Tail, male, snailing. Tail, male, snailing. Okay. Drop, flop, plopping. Drop, flop, plopping. Okay. 17, 187, 781. 17, 187, 781. 24, 426, 642. 24, 426, 622. Okay. Let's try that one more time. 24, 426, 642. 24, 426, 622. Okay, so you did get that one wrong, and I will note that down. And like I said, we will redo this test every day of your stay, so hopefully we'll see some improvement there, okay? All right. So I have a series of equations that I would like you to solve just verbally. Can you tell me what 12 plus 17 is? Yes, 12 plus 17 is 25. Sorry, 35. Okay. 7 times 3? 21. 14 divided by 2? 7. 10 plus 12? 22. I have two equations here that I would like you to solve on paper. Okay. Are you able to see these okay? Um, yes. Here and here? Yes. So go ahead and you can use this area as scratch paper if need be and then write your answer in the box next to the equation, okay? Okay. You want to lay down? Very good. So 19 minus 4 is 15, and 241 plus 362 is 603. Very good. Okay. Any difficulties with that for you? No. Okay. 
So your neurological inspection is done. Um, I would say you did fairly well. There were a couple things that you had a little hiccups on, so we will be reassessing those, and hopefully, like I said, we'll see some improvement. At this time, I would like to go ahead and move on with a very brief physical inspection, okay? Sure. Excuse me while I just put these away. Is your IV feeling okay? Any pain or discomfort there? There's no pain or discomfort. Thank We are going to move on to a visual inspection. I'm going to start by having a look at your face, neck, head area with my pen light. Okay. So you can just look wherever you'd like. It is going to be a little bright, okay? okay? So they already did kind of a brief assessment to just check for any injuries and nothing was noted, but I do I just want to make sure nothing was missed. Not noticing any signs of swelling. Okay. I'm just going to have a look at your legs. Okay, so I'm going to come behind you if that's all right. I do want to have a look at your scalp. Okay. okay, James, so just having a look at the back of your neck as well as your back, looking for any obvious signs of injury. I don't see anything. Um, you said you were having a headache. Did your neck or spine jerk at all during the accident did yes. you kind of feel like a whiplash effect where your head moved rapidly backwards and forwards it went to the left to the side yeah. okay um you did not hit your head on anything correct you didn't hit your head on the window no. okay so i'm going to be doing some palpating with my fingers okay. um Mostly on your head, I do just want to make sure that there is no injury that was missed. Okay. Slightly concerned that you may have a mild concussion, especially given that you have the headache and elevated blood pressure can sometimes indicate an abnormality there, especially where you said your head jerked from one side to the other. So possibility is there pain as I do this no it feels okay no and no pain on your back oh. okay. so I have a comb here and I'm just gonna look at a couple sections on your scalp, mostly looking for any lacerations that might have been missed. Was there any broken glass in the car? Um, like the windshield or the window? No, the, the outside mirror was broken. Okay, um, but nothing where maybe shards of glass would have gotten inside the car. No, the window was down, thankfully. Okay. And the airbags were deployed, correct? Yes, they were. Did the passenger side airbag hit you at all? Uh, yes, I believe it did. Okay. Just taking a different comb here. Do you have any discomfort, any tingling or numbness anywhere on your scalp as I'm pressing? No. You're able to feel all of this? Yes, I can feel okay. it. So we will do more of an in-depth sensory exam 
tomorrow. Tonight I mostly want to just get you settled in. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and have a listen to your lungs while I'm here. Okay. Just breathe normally for me. So the next time I touch you, I want you to say 99 and do that every time until I tell you to stop, okay? Yes. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, perfect. So I am going to undo your gown here, if that's okay. Can I have you take a big deep breath in and out? Do that again. And out. Okay. So all of that sounds healthy. Continuing with your lung examination, there are a couple of things that I would like you to do. I'm gonna place both of my hands on your back like this, and I want you to say 99. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Perfect. So now you're gonna feel me percuss with my fingers, so you will feel this motion and just breathe normally, okay? Yes. Any pain or discomfort anywhere there? No, there isn't. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna do while I'm back here is just take a measurement of your head, mm -hmm. and we will do this every day. This is going to help us assess for any decrease in swelling, okay? So current measurement is right at 25 inches, which is on the larger side for an adult male, so we'll keep track of that to see if that's just your baseline or if there's some kind of intracranial swelling going on, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and come back around the front. Okay. okay, so let me have a look at my paper here. Hello. Can I have this? I'm sorry. <laughs> She's very cute. She's not very happy with me, I guess. She's not happy with a lot of people. <laughs> okay. That's just her personality, I take it. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and test some pupillary reaction. I have a couple of varieties of lights here that I will be using to test this. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with this one just to get an initial assessment done. So I'm gonna leave this open for now because I will be having a look at your abdomen, but we'll do that in just a few. So if I could have you just look straight ahead for me.
let's do that again. Let me just have a quick look in your eyes. I did notice maybe a slight delay. And you said your head moved to which side? The left. Okay. Is that uncomfortable at all? No, it's okay. okay. I apologize for the extended light exposure. I just am seeing a very slight delay. a quick note of that. Okay. Alrighty, let me just attach my autoscope. Can I have you tilt your head back for me? I'm going to be having a look in your nose. Looking for any obstructions or possible deviations secondary to your accident. Okay. So no obstructions noted. I'm going to go ahead and have a quick look in your ear. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn your head for me. Nothing notable there. So I will go ahead and just do a very, very brief oral examination. Like I said, we will go in depth with more of the physical exam tomorrow, but I do want to make sure that everything is okay for tonight. So stick your tongue out for me and up towards your hard pellet there. There you go. Now stick your tongues out as far as you can and say, ah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, very good. <laughs> Very good. Gag reflex is definitely intact. Okay. This is intact. Okay. So I do want to test your swallow reflex. So I'm going to have you swallow for me. And again. My mouth is kind of dry right now. One more time. Are you feeling any obstructions in your throat? No. Do you feel like it's safe to swallow at this time? I don't. Okay. So I will go ahead and have the nurse bring in a little bit of water. We'll start with some water, see how you do in about 20 minutes or so if you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. We can probably progress to getting you some dinner tonight, okay? Thank you. James, well, that's all I really have at this time. I would say that for now, we are going to continue your vital signs Q4 hours. So the nurses will come in and check them every four hours. Um, let me just do some quick palpations on your abdomen here. Any soreness or tenderness here? No. When is the last time you had a bowel movement? Uh, last night. Okay. Do you typically go every day? Yes, I do. Okay, so belly is soft and palpable, not noticing any abnormal distension. I just have a quick look. Breathe in for me. You know?
Okay, so let me just write down a couple recommendations for the nursing team tonight. So we're gonna do your vital signs every four hours as well as a brief neurological assessment. So what that means is they'll come in, they'll check your pupils, they'll ask you what your name is, if you know where you are every four hours. Okay, I'm also gonna have them do orthostatic blood pressures AM and PM. Okay. So first thing in the morning, typically around seven o'clock, they'll come in, they'll take your blood pressure, lying, sitting, and standing. Okay. That's just gonna test for any variations with movement, and I wanna do that before you go to sleep as well. So typically 7 a.m., 11 p.m. Okay. Okay. We will also be, let's see. I would feel more comfortable tonight at least having you labeled as a standby assist. Um, which basically means I want someone in the room with you while you walk to the bathroom. They don't have to physically help you, but just someone nearby, just in case, if that's okay. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so I will notate that. Um, you're mostly independent. You can walk to the bathroom yourself. I just want them nearby, just in case, okay? Sure. And then the only other thing I would say is, because I am kind of leaning towards a possible concussion, I want you to avoid screens for tonight. Okay. So no TV, no cell phone, that kind of thing. I know you do have one with you, okay. but if we could just avoid looking at that for too long tonight, okay? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and order you some Tylenol Q6. Um, so every six hours, they can give that to you more frequently if you need it, as frequently as every four hours, and we can start that first dose now if you feel like you need it. Okay, that's fine, I don't okay. have a slight headache. Perfect. Okay, so I will get you some Tylenol. We'll start with some water, and then we're just kind of doing observation tonight. So you can hang out. Okay. Um, if you need anything for your cats, do let us know. You do have your call button. Okay. And I am going to come back to check on you first thing in the morning, okay? All right, thank All right. you. Thank you so much. Sure.